Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I am coming at you with my follow-up video on the 2017 Microsoft Surface Pro. So today we are going to do the follow-up on the i5 unit. We, of course, are going to come at this from the standpoint of the creative professional. So a lot of what we talk about today will be uh, for the graphic artist, the digital illustrator, the designer, if you aren't using the machine for creative purposes, this might not be the review you want to sit through, but you will still get some good information about the machine and where we are at with it. Uh, so it's been about nine months now. So I've had the machine for nine months, and that's a pretty decent chunk of time. So today we are going to see how the hardware has held up. We are going to go back into power and see how power has held up. And I also want to cover some things I didn't get to speak on in the original review. So also the original review, the quality wasn't the best. So uh, I wanted to also just take you around the hardware a little bit as I talk and um, show you the machine in better detail than the original. So if you've been following along with me over the years, uh, you know that I was a user of Surface from the first generation, and I was one of the people who got hit with a lot of the defects with the Pro 4. I had to get like five replacements, and none of them worked. So I wound up having to stop using the Surface because every Pro 4 that I got had a major defect, uh, and and that is kind of what led me away from the Surface. And... Uh, going into uh, getting the 2017, I was really hesitant, honestly, uh, because after experiencing that with the Pro 4, uh, you know, my recommendation kind of went down for it. Also, you know, we had uh, the Consumer Reports stuff come out where it was off of their recommendation list. So I really went in uh, pretty iffy and, uh, and, and hesitant. So I was hesitant to pull the trigger on this, and uh, but I wanted to test it for myself, and I pulled the trigger on it. And what we discovered in the original review was that Microsoft really kind of honed in on getting the details right and getting a lot of those problems out, at least the problems that I experienced in, with the Pro 4, uh, what, what I discovered uh, in analyzing the machine was that Microsoft uh, really kind of doubled down on it and got a lot of those major problems uh, out of the machine. And I really think that came down to uh, really just mastering this design language, mastering the form factor and uh, mastering things uh, from the machining level, from the factory level. And these were things that were really obvious to me in the original review. They were things that I could pretty much tell right away. And although a lot of the changes here and evolutions are subtle, uh, for me, seeing those problems kind of disappear uh, made these subtle evolutions go a long way. So if you are new to the channel today, the Surface for me is a machine where I do about 85% of my customer work on it. So uh, it's a machine that I use when I'm outside of my shop, when I'm outside of my office to do a lot of my customer files and customer work. And uh, the machine has been in use every day for the past nine months. It's really my daily driver. So... This is what I use when I'm outside of the shop. Now, I've been in the design field for 20 years. I've been in business for 10 years, and I've had the shop for 10 years. This is the 10th year, and the operation is pretty vast, and the amount of customers that we have and the, the, the kind of projects that we have to work on. So uh, from, my, from our regular clientele to the, the big film projects that we work on. And uh, a lot of big projects have been uh, being done on the 2017 surface this year, um, between the end of 2017 and uh, 2018. So that's really the, the, the main use case of the machine for me. And um, I've really been putting it through its paces. I've really been pushing it to its limits. Uh, because for me, uh, for me, 
I do prefer a machine that has the specs. I do prefer something like the Surface Book, which has powerful discrete graphics and, and the quad-core chip, because the softwares I use, the, the, the things that are connected to the shop and running my machinery, uh, they take advantage of uh, quad-core chips. So if if I were to get a quad-core machine, I know all those cores are going to be in use. Um, so that's why I was excited in the review, and that's why the machine uh, impresses me here, the i5. Uh, being that it is a machine that is so thin and light, being that it has no fan, it doesn't make any noise, Everything that I've tossed at it, while it does have limitations, and that is one of the trade-offs of using a machine that is this thin and light, I've really been surprised at where this thing has taken me and what I've been able to pull off with it. And and, and that's really the thing with it. The, the Surface is something that you can pick up, you can grab and go. It has all-day battery life. But... Going in, I really did not have high expectations. Honestly, going in, I had pretty low expectations because I am someone who uh, really would choose a machine that's a quad-core that has the, has good discrete graphics. That's something that I would normally, nine times out of ten, choose over the, uh, the, the, the specs that are in the 2017. So going in, I prepared and expected to you know, be working with a machine that will have some limitations. And, and again, like I said earlier, that is the trade off here. If you, you know, if you want something that is this thin and this light, there's usually a trade off, you, you really can't fit powerful discrete graphics in something like this, at least not yet. Um, so there's, there's a trade off, you know, uh, it's not a powerhouse machine, and, and really, especially the i5, it's not a machine really designed to be pushed, and that is where the excitement came in in the original review. That, that, that's where, uh, when I saw that even pushing it to its limit, that it could handle the large stuff that I was tossing at it, uh, that is really what impressed me with the machine, and that is what still impresses me nine months later. Now, also, having it now for an extended period of time, I can say the hardware has held up great. Everything is still solid. The kickstand still super solid, and that was one of the big improvements of the 2017. Um, the, the, uh, the design, the build, the parts... Um, I've had no issues as far as physical hardware goes. Everything is still pretty much in mint condition. Everything is still working uh, in perfect condition. I haven't run in, into any hardware defects or, um, or any problems uh, hardware-wise. Now, of course, this year we got the pen, which is not included, but this was the updated pen with the 4,000 pressure levels, and tilt functionality built within. I still like the pen. It's still an, an enjoyable experience for me. Um, it works best in software that is set up for it, uh, specifically set up for Windows Inc., set up for the tilt. Uh, that is where I find that you get the best experience with it. Also, when I talk about the pen, I'm not including handwriting. For handwriting, the pen is a good experience all around. Now, over time, I do want to see them improve it even more. I do want to see jitter totally taken away. I do want to see uh, the tip redesigned. I, I do think they can evolve this pen to rival the other technologies out there. When it comes to the Alcantara type cover, uh, everything is still in great condition. The fabric has held up great over time. I haven't had any issues as far as the fabric goes. Uh, in terms of the keys uh, of the type cover, everything is still functioning perfect. Uh, we haven't run into any broken keys. We haven't run into any keys sticking. Backlight still works great. So all around, hardware-wise, nine months in, everything is still pretty much like when I unboxed it. And those subtle changes and those subtle evolutions 
I think are a testament to uh, how it has, you know, kind of held up over time much better than my past experiences with earlier generations. So we are going to go right into the system. We're going to get into power and performance. We're going to see how performance has held up over time nine months later. So just recently, the big spring update came in for Windows 10. We got some cool new features built into the system now. Um, we have a new task viewer where we can see what we were doing earlier in the week or earlier in the day. Uh, we now have wireless sharing built in and a bunch of other various improvements. Um, one other thing I didn't speak on in the original review or the Versus uh, video that we did, which I should have, is Windows does have a tablet mode that you can seamlessly switch in and out of, and it works great. When you're in the tablet mode, everything else kind of falls to the background, and it brings things forward, and it's a very streamlined experience. I don't work in, in it that much, but it is there if you wanted to use it like that, and it works really well. So there's a bunch of improvements in the latest generation and all around uh, the system uh, w combined with the hardware, things really feel m much more unified now. Windows is in a really great place um, in terms of functionality, in terms of streamlines of workflow. I really enjoy working with Windows 10. Uh, it, it's really great. Also in the latest generation of uh, Windows, the current version, um, there are nice improvements to the multi-touch keyboard. This is a really accurate keyboard. You can really work with this keyboard when you have the physical one detached for an extended period of time, and it is extremely accurate and comfortable to work with because you have the various angles of the kickstand. It's really one of the best multi-touch keyboards, and there's a lot of functionality built into this keyboard as well. It's really seamless. You can you know, pop in and out of your workflow very easily. Um, and you, you know, you get a bunch of different options. You can split the keyboard um, for if you were holding it like that as a tablet, you can use a, a smaller style keyboard, which also has swipe functionality built into it. This I use a lot, really nice that you can pull this up at any time. And you also get uh, another version of the keyboard, which has the number row, kind of, kind of a bigger version of the keyboard with more functionality. Um, so they've done great work when it comes to the multi-touch keyboard. So the system feels unified with the Surface. It feels really good together. Surface in terms of general computing, in terms of everyday workflows, uh, it is still really fast. It's still just as fast as it was when I first got it. Uh, read and write speeds have really impressed me over time. Uh, startup speed is super fast. You know, just moving around the system. Of course, multi-touch is extremely accurate here. There is no issues. Uh, there are no issues when it comes to uh, touch targets or anything like that. Multi-touch is totally streamlined into this system in a very seamless way. So speed-wise, uh, everyday computing, browsing the web, you know, things that you would do every day, the Surface is just a very snappy experience when it comes to that. Uh, so nine months later, still very snappy. And that's important when you start catching these streamlines of workflow. Another thing I love is that we get dedicated apps like Instagram and Twitter, even though that's a small thing, it's awesome to have these built on the system if you want to share your work, if you're in the middle of a piece. Now, I don't show my face here much. I don't get to because we're focusing on the product, but here I am on my Instagram, and if you are interested in seeing who I am and what I'm all about, if you're if you're interested in seeing my projects, if you guys want to see some of the films that I'm working on, I post a lot of that stuff on Instagram. Uh, so if you want to find me on Instagram, you can kind of see all the different things that I'm working on. Here's a picture of me when I was 14 with a poster I illustrated for one of our shows. But this is awesome. This is great to have because if you are working on a piece, uh, you can really share the progress of it directly from the machine. Uh, and, and that's really nice. Also dedicated Twitter app. Uh, we just got uh, an updated version of it. So it's, it's responsive. So you can scale it down. You can pop it in and out of your workflows. Um, it scales all the way up and then you can scale it down uh, into the more kind of smartphone style. And it's great. 
course, the big thing here is with the try input system, pen, mouse, and touch. And all of them work together seamlessly. You can seamlessly float between each one with no problem. Browsing the web is a fluid experience with the Surface. Uh, very enjoyable to float back and forth from multi-touch to working with the mouse. I just recently launched my new site, so I have it pulled up here. Um, and, you know, the site has a pretty decent amount of animations and, and different things going on. And uh, the, the Surface renders the site out quickly and very nicely. So if you guys want to check out the new site, I'll put a link in the description. I'm still in the process of uh, getting a lot of different projects uploaded. Um, so, you know, evolving it over time, uh, still have a lot of stuff to get up. So I did the redesign and, and the rebrand pretty much with the Surface. I did the entire site with the Surface. So there's a bunch of cool stuff up on the site, a bunch of you know, different projects of, from the portfolio if you guys want to check it out. Also, uh, I also have the store now directly built into the website. It's baked in. It's not a separate store anymore. So when the brush sets are ready, you'll be able to just go right to the website, go to the store and get the sets. Um, I'll have stuff from my line in there as well in terms of apparel and different graphics and decals and things like that. Um, I'll also have uh, art prints and stuff like that in the store, along with the lessons and the courses that are coming. So uh, the, the full lessons and the full courses, uh, all of that you'll be able to access right through the website. All right, guys, so let's get into performance. Now, one of my biggest use cases with the Surface is coupling it with Adobe Illustrator. This is one of those things that links back to the shop and the operation. Uh, so a lot of my customers' work is done in Adobe Illustrator, and also a lot of other stuff for myself is done in Illustrator. Uh, so it's a big part of the, the, the process for me uh, for the vector art portion of the work uh, and, and the large print portion of the work. Uh, and this is one of the things that impressed me back when I was first testing it, how Illustrator performed with it for really large stuff. Uh, if we look here, for example, going from the logo design to a customer's fleet graphics, if we uh, you know, were to break down the scale and size here, this artboard is a 200 inch by 200 inch artboard. Uh, you know, so that is real world scale there in terms of uh, the photo in terms of the the actual size uh, of what's going on there. So, uh, you know, and when you get into that and when you're mixing raster and vector together, files get really big, up to a gig to two gigs, and the surface pushes those out with no problem when it comes down to export times. Also, Adobe has really streamlined the software for the Surface. You get a really nice multi-touch environment if you want to float in and out of that. Um, and multi-touch works very good uh, when you're in the other environment as well, uh, the standard environment. So uh, they've streamlined the software. Illustrator is fluid. It's fast. Multi-touch works great. It's easy to float between mouse and uh, pen and touch with it. So uh, this is really one of the best illust illustrator experiences that I get uh, coupling it with the surface. Now I'm not someone who uses the pen input for illustrator. I work in the classic way with the mouse and pen tool when I am working vector. Um, but so but you know for the process that I do uh, execute, it just lines up really great for me. So Illustrator performance with the 2017 Surface Pro, the i5 is great. Um, fast, fluid, easy to work with, great options. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, experiences for Illustrator. So then we go into the raster side, and that is the side for painting and illustration. That's the stuff where we're doing everything by hand with the pen. Now, I did the performance video, but I took that down recently because I feel that it was kind of confusing people. So I just took it down. But 
I run a custom driver on my Surface, and I do that for a couple different reasons. One, I do that because I work in Paintstorm, and running the custom driver and having access to the Intel control panel lets me run the machine in the lowest power mode possible. When I run in the low power mode, I'm able to run Paintstorm basically cold. Uh, it doesn't get hot. It doesn't drain battery life quickly. Um, and without access to that control panel, you can't run Paintstorm in that way. It'll run always in medium power mode, and that uses more battery life, and it, and it runs warmer. So that's why uh, I like to have access to that control panel. Also, it allows me to push it to a higher level of performance if I need it to push. So I use this custom driver, uh, but for most other stuff like Illustrator or Photoshop or other raster softwares, you really don't need this custom driver uh, if you work in those other softwares because the stock settings and what you get out of the box is fine for that. I only run this custom software because I'm using... Uh, I only run the custom driver because I'm using a software that uses a lot more resources than um, a lot of other softwares. Now, I did get hit with some pen bugs for the past two months, and I wasn't really able to work in Paintstorm. Um, and that was a bummer for me because it was turning out to be nothing like what I showed you guys in the original review. The most recent update, the spring update, seems to have cleared these issues out, and the experience is back to... Uh, being much more like how I showed uh, in, in the original review. So I was happy that uh, whatever bug was causing the problems, which I think was related to WinTab, I was happy to see that clear out in the most recent update. So in Paintstorm, the pen is not supported, but you can get a working experience through using WinTab. Uh, it would be much better, of course, if it had full support for the Surface Pen, uh, and they will get that in eventually. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to get the most amazing experience in Paintstorm Studio with the Surface uh, because of that, but you, you will get a usable experience. And for me, uh, it's usable enough for me to work with and enjoy. The, the thing I really enjoy about working with Paintstorm with the Surface is the ability to go into those medium or high power modes, turn on the GPU for the brush, and then push the brush with the GPU. And that allows me to push brushes up to 500, 600 pixels uh, without running into major lag. So the Paintstorm experience is, is nice on the surface. Also, I can work on multiple full-scale images, you know, going up to 18 by 24, 15 by 15, and everything is at high resolution, 300 DPI. So those are really large-scale uh, canvases to work on at that high resolution. And um, this is one of those other things that excited me about the Surface in the original review. This was one of those things where I was really surprised and did not expect the Surface to be able to really do any of this stuff. At least with the i5, I didn't expect it. Uh, you know, you probably will get a bigger performance push with the Iris Plus, the i7 model, but... Uh, I'm still very impressed at what this i5 can pull off, um, especially when it comes to the large scale. So when I open something that's big, uh, that, that's a big canvas, uh, you can see the, the, the read time is really quick. And then when I go to save that, uh, it's also really quick. Um, and, and, and that's true for a variety of different file types, you know, from having a lot of layers uh, to, to big scale stuff. So um, that's one of the other things that really impresses me. Also, here, all of the stuff that I'm showing you here is in low power mode. So in this low power mode, again, I'm still impressed with how it performs in this low power mode, the fluidity of working in the software and things like that. We're going to open up another image here that's pretty large in scale. Uh, and you know, again, it just pops that open. This has a lot of layers, high resolution, 300 DPI, and I still get a fluid experience. What would really tie it all together and really kind of uh, solidify the experience, because Paintstorm is really my go-to when it comes to illustration and painting, uh, what would really kind of steal the deal for me would be, you know, support for the pen. Uh, 
uh, that's really the biggest setback of, of, of Paintstorm. Paintstorm works best with discrete graphics. Uh, this is another reason why I was impressed at the push I can get here. Now, you will definitely get a better experience with Paintstorm with the Surface Book too. Having that, you know, that powerful discrete card, that's something that Paintstorm loves and really kind of eats up. But you still get a working, usable experience uh, with the i5 unit, which is impressive. Now, if you use Clip Studio Paint and you want to couple it with the Surface, you're going to get a great experience because Clip is set up for the new pen. It's set up for the new technology. That means tilt is going to come through. That means the 4K pressure levels. It feels really natural to work in Clip with the Surface Pen. Uh, it's a really good experience. They really did good work here. And there's a couple different things that are still very impressive about Clip Studio Paint. Um, one is the software doesn't use many resources to run, so you can flip into high power mode and get a really fast experience in Clip when you're in high power mode, but that won't affect your battery life and it won't run hot. So uh, that's very impressive. And, you, and I'm talking for large scale, very big works, you know, 18 by 24, 300 DPI. And when I do these quick renders here, you can see the dynamics of the Surface Pen coming through. Uh, these are some of my pencils that I'm starting to design. Older stuff that I'm updating. Um, you can see the tilt functionality coming through really nicely here. Um, so really nice. Or if I pull up this old piece, you know, this is something that's big in scale, 18 by 24. No problems. Also, really nice multi-touch experience in clip uh, with the Surface. Uh, so you get really nice streamlines of workflow. Clip still has a really good engine. Paintstorm is my go-to software, but if I had to choose a second, my second favorite would definitely be Clip Studio Paint. Here are some of my custom paint brushes. I made these years ago, and I just started refining these brushes uh, for uh, the Surface Pen and this input and and I'm, I'm tweaking them also to kind of match my paintstorm set uh, as much as I can you know there's a lot of differences in the in, in the in the two engines and and there's a lot of differences in, in how things work in each this is a high resolution canvas 300 dpi I think it's 12 by 12 so decent size these are complex brushes to, uh, so they're complex in that they're they're trying to mimic oil, basically, as close as possible um, in, in the way that I design these. You can see how fast they render here when I start rendering and blending and mixing the paint. It's not like the stock stuff that comes with Clip. Uh, very different than, like, the transparent watercolor brush. Uh, and to pull this off, it this is when Clip will start using more resources. Or the, the first one that I rendered out there was a bristle brush, and that has a complex kind of... Uh, tip and th this is where things can start to bog down but with the refinements that I'm doing to the brushes and just with the streamline here it's still extremely impressive to be able to pull off working with these kind of brushes that are more complex at such a high resolution and still get decent performance so very cool I'm also laying down some ink lines here I just wanted to show you how um, uh, ink is laying down really nicely, uh, so I'm I'm definitely seeing a lot less jitter. I don't know what that what the update did, but I'm definitely seeing improvements. Also, you are going to get a good experience if you want to illustrate or paint in Photoshop. Photoshop is also set up for the Surface Pen, and Photoshop is set up for Surface in general really good. You're going to get the multi-touch experience coming through nicely. Uh, you're going to get the tilt. You're going to feel the pressure of the pen. It's it's natural. Uh, I don't work in Photoshop for illustration or painting, but um, when I do when I do test it, when I do go into it, uh, I can feel that the, the when I'm doing something like let's say sketching, uh, the experience feels really natural. So uh, I think you will enjoy that. Also, if if you don't use Photoshop for illustration, but you use it for other stuff like I do, um, for for editing and manipulation and things like that you get a good experience. And all around, 
nine months later, I'm still impressed with the performance of this machine. Like I said earlier, I'm someone who would prefer the quad core and discrete graphics, and I might in the future upgrade to the Surface Book 2. Um, I'm not sure yet, but but I'm still really impressed with the power of this machine with how thin and light it is, how easy it is to take with you on a meeting, if you're traveling, if you have uh, multiple studios, whatever that may be, I'm still impressed at what I can pull off with the Surface Pro. Hopefully in the next generation, we'll get the the quad core chip in here and maybe they can pull off the AMD combo with the the combo chip that they're working on uh, with Intel. Uh, maybe they'll fit in some kind of, you know, lower grade discrete card. Um, they might be able to pull that off in the next generation, and that would really kind of take the Surface into the more power level. But even for what it is right now, I think in the various demos that I've showed you, of course, if also if you looked at the original review and watched that and saw the, the performance when I first got the machine, to see it still working in this way nine months later, I think can give you some assurance on the machine uh, if you do want to pull the trigger on it. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today. We have a lot of content being worked on and planned for the channel. I really appreciate it. If you guys can subscribe, if you can like, if you can share this video with your friends, that would be great. Have a great day.